as I promised last time, we are heading to read some of sound hadith related to the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, from Sahih al-Bukhari, which describe um, the life, the real life of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, with his uh, women, if they are the, his wives or his uh, daughters, um, the companions, the female companions, and really we want to, to focus upon that because this is the model that we have to follow. And it is, this is the second reason, it is the practical understanding of how the relationship between husbands and wives should be. So should we always speak about something which is very much ideal and which we can't really find in our real life. So we want really to, to bridge the gap between us as Muslims and real practice of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, to understand much better the Quran and the Sunnah and to be able to really to be more competent to live proper Islamic life with our spouses, with our husbands, with our daughters, with our brothers and sisters and the people around us who are between brackets strangers So this is important. Today I'm, I'm going to start with this hadith which um, about divorce. The Prophet divorced his wives. So offering divorce by the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, to his wives is very shocking. We are talking about the best women on earth who were married to Muhammad and we are talking about the Prophet himself. Yeah, this is shocking. And we can't even comprehend upon what or why should the Prophet offer his wife's divorce. So what is the understanding? Why should we have divorce in the first place in any family? Divorce is to dissolve your marriage contract with your spouse. So a woman can dissolve that upon asking for divorce or seeking khura. The husband can dissolve his marriage contract by the word of divorce, talaktuki, or any equal word which will come out with the same result. So, talaq. According to al-fuqaha, talaq won't exist unless we have a word which 100% equal to a talaq word. The explanation of that, a man can divorce his wife just by saying the word, anti talaq a woman, a Muslim woman, can divorce her husband by the word, by using the same word. A talaq, divorce, is in the hand of the husband. Does this seem to be unfair? No. Do we have some wisdom behind that? Yes. Is it as some people explain? because men, they are most wiser, much wiser than women. No, I'm not saying that. Well, people used to say that, but I'm not with this, because we know that we may find many men who misuse this word. I think most of you 
met someone like that using it in a very ridiculous manner just for asking someone to eat in his house or to eat from his hand or to feel angry for stupid reasons I have someone <laughs> this is a very funny example the woman she called me she said my husband said the divorce word. Upon what? This was my question. She said it was like that. Because every time you have to ask for the scenario, how it happened. This is important to decide, to issue the fatwa if this was a yameen, just an oath, or the husband really mentioned, meant this divorce to happen. So we are digging for the intention of that husband upon the situation. Why should the fuqaha think this way? Because men misuse this word. <laughs> this is the reality. Why should I, as a mufti, dig for the intention? If this word won't mean what it means. So this is important to understand. However, returning back to this lady, so she mentioned that her husband divorced her upon a situation. What was the situation? She said that she was cleaning the rug carpet. After she finished, her children stepped into the house and stepped on the carpet and of course it is dirty because of that it turned to be dirty because of that so the husband he could not take this action from the children immediately he said if you enter the house he was addressing his children his own children if you step into the house again, this is a condition, your mom will be divorced. <laughs> Unbelievable, yeah? So my reaction to, what, to that was, I'm sorry, it was really improper reaction. I said, hang on, was it? Was it, you know, was it him who cleaned it or you? Was it you who brushed it or him? She said, I've done the whole thing. So she was the one who is really tired. But she did not say a word. And now he is the husband. He felt angry. So he said the divorce word. And of course, it is conditional divorce. The meaning. The minute the children will step in the house again, their mom will be divorced. So if the condition is there, the result is there. In such incident, this is the funny thing as well. Most one who will approach and ask and issue, you know, seeking the fatwa upon divorce incidents, it is the woman. Although the divorce world be launched by the husbands. Why is that? Feeling shy? Yeah, this is part of the reason. So every time some lady, ladies will ask for issuing a fatwa upon divorce word, I'll say to them, and of course, every single mufti should do the same. We have to go and to ask the husband. Again, the husband should speak out what was his intention. Of course, he can't hide. We'll bring him in. And because most of 
you know, the Mufti chairs are led, led by men. He will feel shy to tell some other fellows, some other men, why and how he said the reverse word. He will be, feel the shame, and I think he, he should. However, so <laughs> about that, about the real cases, we know that men, they are not always wiser than women. But the divorce word still being given by Islam to men. Aban what? Aban the case that in general, men, they are the one who are financially responsible. So if there will be a divorce, they have to pay out the rest of the dowry. This is one thing. Secondly, they have to provide, still, to provide to their divorcee women upon that. And they have still to provide to their children forever. Number four, that they are the one who will seek to get married again. In this case, they are financially broken. So divorce, financially speaking, it is a source of breaking those men. So if they are not going to stop and think twice about their own families, which is really a big shame not to think about it, they have to deal with financial problems. Can I ask a question? Yes, please. Um, the support the women, number two that you had? Yes. How long do they have to support them? And till the period which uh, is from, uh, which is three months, which we call to it make sure she's not pregnant. Well, it is set by Sharia, three months, Four three months. periods. Yeah, it is three periods of time. Okay? which we call Qur. This Qur in Arabic means two things. That to have her period and to start counting from the minute that she finished her period the first time, then the second time, then the third time. According to Islamic law here in Jordan, they set it to be three months. I thought four months. As, yeah, as counting. That's for when the husband dies. Okay, so a band divorce, it is three months, okay? Again, three period time from, again, from the minute she is clean from her period the first time, start counting, another two times after that, or the minute she has her period starting with, so counting starting with each way. It's about menopause women. Well, even those, they are going with this group as well, three months. Three months. Mm -hmm. Even the underage, mm -hmm. if, if again, we take this as, as a possibility, reminding you, since we are there, someone will ask me, should it be underage marriage? There exists in Islam. Well, to remind you, it was something, historically speaking, before Islam. But even with that, no intercourse exists till the woman has her own period, okay? The meaning, there will be a contract, verbal contract, but it won't, go, you know, get its validity as intercourse, you know, to, to let the man have his intercourse with this lady, with this young underage girl, till she has her own puberty age. Yet, what Islam added, and most people don't really understand that, which is a very important condition, we have something which we call in Islam khayar al gulug which is the puberty 
condition, the probability choice. Okay? In Arabic, it is khayal al which again translated to be probability age, probability choice, which means that even if the man was married to underage girl, he can't has intercourse with her till she reached property age. Still, and she approved this marriage contract. So two things, to reach the property age. Secondly, now she says, I, yes, I agree upon that. It is valid or not to validate it to say I'm not happy with this marriage contract, for example, okay? And it happened. To give you an example, we have the example of Abdullah ibn Umar, which mentioned in fiqh books. It says that Abdullah ibn Umar, radiyallahu anh, may Allah be pleased with him, he engaged, he was engaged. According to the Arab, they will say he was married to the daughter of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Okay? When, remember Ali ibn Abi Talib remained again after Fatima, radiyallahu anha, the daughter of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So what happened? That Abdullah ibn Umar was married to this underage girl of Ali ibn Abi Talib. And what happened? When she reached puberty age, remember, it is khayar al She reached the choice. It is now to be completed, to be validated upon her choice. And intercourse did not exist yet. Did not happen yet. So she did not validate this marriage contract. So Abdullah ibn Umar, he felt sad. He could not keep her his wife. He, now remember, we said men has divorce word. They can dissolve. But in certain conditions, they are losing this right. This is one of those. Okay? So Abdullah ibn Umar, again, his wife, who was underage, the daughter of Ali ibn Abi Talib, when she reached puberty age, she did not validate this marriage contract. What happened? Abdullah ibn Umar felt sad, but he could not say a word. That's it, the end of the story. So those girls who are underage, again, if they being divorced, if, they are follow the same group, which is to wait three months after they get divorced. Why is this period of time? It is for two things. We call al-imhalu, al-imhalu wal-istibra. So two reasons to have this period after divorce, after the husband say the divorce word. Remember, by saying the divorce word, it is not yet the end of the story. Still, the marriage contract is valid, but for a while. This while is three period, three months. Those three months for what? For two reasons. This is the wisdom behind those three months. The first one, we call it Al-Imhal in Arabic. What is Al-Imhal? Al-Imhal, it is a waiting period of time. It is a space of time. For what? This is the meaning of Imhal. To give the husband and the wife another chance to reconsider this again. To rethink about such decision again. Perhaps he said it, 
and he didn't mean it. This is one of possibility. Perhaps he said it and he meant it, but he regretted it. And this is the family. We don't want to break the family for just a word without even proper time of thinking. This is a final decision. It should be taken slowly and your mind and heart and thinking about the consequences. 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 Thank you very much. <laughs> the results, it is easier for me now to say it. So please keep this recorded. Okay, so Al Imhal, this is a required objective, a requirement for such period of time. The second thing is we call Al Istibra. What is the meaning of Al Istibra? Why should I explain? Because we don't have exact translation for any Arabic word, believe me. Especially when you are talking about something in Islamic context. You can't say it and, you know, fly with it easy. So, Al Istibra, what is the meaning of Al Istibra? Al Istibra means to make sure that there is no pregnancy. It is as simple as that. Pregnancy is not there. There is no chance to have another baby. Now, we can do this, a bond blood test. We can. Still, this period of time is a requirement for the second reason, which is an impact. Okay? Even, even if the man said, I'm, I'm sure I don't want to return back to her again. No. Remember, there is something as a woman now I'm looking at, which never been mentioned there. And I think this is important reason. Feeling responsibility. On the man's side, on the husband's side, toward this woman who was his wife. And secondly, now I'm looking from a woman angle. Remember in Islam, as a woman, I'm resting upon him to provide for me. Now he said the divorce word, where shall I go? There is no place for me. Now, just like a job, it is a notice. Now I have three months notice to think about the coming days. What can I do? During those three months, he is responsible to provide for me. This is Islam. Three months, I'll be able to think what can I do for the rest of my life without him. To reach the balance because emotionally I'm broken. I want my wound to be healed. All these, none of our ulama spoke about. I think this is the great wisdom behind that. Because Islam, from the beginning, from where I get that, Islam, you read the chapter on women in Islam, in Quran. It is about providing for women. It's about women getting out and work and to provide for themselves and to, to get, you know, and to have their um, bank account upon their dowry, to, to find some money to rely upon, financially to be, to, 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 to be strong enough financially. This kind of strengthening women's situation, it goes smoothly with this understanding. Those ladies, they, they need, they are desperate, they really in need for those three months to back up herself again and to stand on her feet and to recognize now I am standing alone. 
What about the children? Ha, huh? they are not part of the story. Excuse me. Your children is yours. And this moms, those moms, they want in Islam change to be single moms seeking extra money from here or there. No. They are the, your responsibility still. You have as a husband, as a father to provide for them. Divorce is to do some, it, you know, it, to, to do with your wife only. Not to provide for her after those three months. But the children, they are your responsibility. So not about the divorce world, oh, I'm free, I'm single again. No, you are not. There is a responsibility. And you have to stand for it. Yes, please. I'm pretty sure the answer is no, but I want to ask it anyway. Um, if a woman is in a verbal or abusive relationship with her husband, and she wants a divorce, and she feels that she's pregnant, but she fears that she tells them he won't divorce her, could she hide a pregnancy from him? I know. This is haram. Haram. According to Al Quran, actually, it is a text, a text in Al Quran itself, mm -hmm. and clear enough that it is haram for any woman, any woman, to hide what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created in her womb. Why is that? Now, we don't have only the right of women, we have the right of the third party, the child. 